everybody. Welcome back to the Winner's Circle. I'm Cody. And I'm Derek. And this week, we are back for our articles and our topic episode. And over the weekend, we had a lot of chaos. Last week, we had a lot of chaos. And then we had something that was very surprising on my end. And I'm going to tell you why. I have a lot of information, did a lot of research as to why I feel like this is absolutely bizarre. But not to get ahead of ourselves for our last topic, our first topic is a very, very deep and intense topic. Um, and it happened over the weekend. It was at a Travis Scott concert that was in Astro World, which is in Houston, Texas. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to bring up the article so you guys can see it. Okay, so you guys are seeing the article here now. It says, after the Texas concert deaths, Travis Scott faces multiple lawsuits. Is the performer liable? So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about here, there was a concert that Travis Scott was holding at a music festival called Astro World in Houston, Texas. At the concert, there was a crowd surge and eight people died. And the ages ranged from 14 years old to 27 years old. Eight people died. And so now it is, it's been all over social media. There's been a ton of videos that have been out. Um, and so there's there's a lot of conversation about what happened at this concert. Who's liable? Is Travis Scott liable? Is the concert liable? Is Live Nation liable? And why did this happen? There was so much information that came out about this. Could it be that, you know, people were suffocated and died that way? There was another... Um, uh, investigation going on with the police in Houston because a security member was jabbed in the neck with a needle. And so there's a lot storming around this. So I want to pose the question to you, Derek, and say, who would you say this is, put yourself in this situation, say maybe your kid or a significant other or a family member is in that situation. Who would you point the finger at first? So first and foremost, thoughts and prayers with all the victims' families including the many, many people that were injured. In fact, I was reading today that the youngest victim in this situation is a nine-year-old boy. His name's Ezra Blunt. Is that, is that newer? In, is that newer information? He, he's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, man. But he's nine years old. He's currently in a medically induced coma. Um, and they, they said right out that it, you know if he comes out of it, his, he's going to have a very big uphill battle going forward with the the amount of trauma and damage that his body took by being trampled by these other people. Um, I believe the family is already uh, suing uh, as well. So thoughts and prayers to everyone involved. Just an absolutely horrific situation. Also, I read it just a few hours ago, actually, about the security guard with the pricking of mm -hmm. the neck. The chief of police just came out and said, that's fake news. Oh, is it? They, they they caught they got the they got spoke to the bodyguard himself okay. and he got punched or something but everyone was saying he got jabbed with a needle so uh you know again it just goes to the point yeah. where misinformation being out mm -hmm. there but they said they spoke to the the actual security guard he did not get poked in the neck but he was he was assaulted so all and that was he said knocked unconscious I don't know if he was knocked unconscious I just saw that the needle the idea that he was injected or pricked with something was false. Yeah. It was just a, a rumor that went out there and snowballed to the fact right. where of course. we thought someone was out jabbing a needle into someone's neck. So to stay focused, what was the exact question you posed Who, to me? So if you're in this situation and somebody, one of your significant others, your kid or somebody's in that situation, who are you pointing the finger at here? So many people. I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of the TikToks. And I know there's some people who say, you know, how could Travis Scott know? There's multiple angles where their people are pleading and screaming and yelling up to Travis, who's with a couple feet of them. Stop the concert. There was even a chant mm -hmm. at some point. He's looking show. in the crowd and he's not stopping. And from what I've been reading, and again, this is just what I've been reading. Th this is kind of a common theme with his shows. A lot of his shows so have this type of say. chaos. And so definitely Travis Scott at the end of the day is the captain of the ship. Do I think he knew what was going on in the crowd? And he just said, Oh, I'm going to just let those people die. Yes. No. Do I think he's probably seen things before from his vantage point where people are passing out or whatever because they're on drugs or drunk and he's assuming that the security and whoever the people are that are handling it will take care of it. Mm -hmm. He's not going to stop a whole show for it. But it seems like it was more than that. It seems like it was a collective effort by a lot of the, the, the people there to get his attention to tell him, hey, Travis, this isn't the normal mm -hmm. thing. There are people dying out here. You need to stop this and mm -hmm. help. You know, you need to point people in the right direction to clear a path. 
And so I think at the end of the day, when you are the face of the show, there is some accountability mm-hmm. there. So I think Travis Scott's definitely one of them. I think Live Nation, who I believe is the company that put on the event, they are also liable because at the end of the day, they are the ones hiring the security officers, hiring the um, um, you know, patrol details from the police department to get there to make sure that they have the proportionate amount of security members there to support the amount of people. Like I'm sure there's a ratio of how many security officers are needed based on the amount of people you have. Like it might be a ratio of like eight to one, whatever it is. And they clearly didn't do that. There was supposedly a walkthrough the day before for the security team. Mm -hmm. But from, from some of the security members, it was very like kind of just a formality. There wasn't a lot of preparation and you can see the videos for yourself. There was literally stampedes going on and the security team didn't know what to do. Yeah. They were completely outnumbered. Um, they weren't prepared. No, they were not prepared. So there's definitely, you go after the, you, you go to the top first, you get all the glory. You're also going to get some of the, you're also going to get the accountability right. here. And so I think Travis Scott has some, some legal problems ahead of him. And I think that live nations going to have some major problems. And then also I was reading, that the event itself, whatever the stadium was or whatever. Astro, oh, the location or the event? The location, Astro. whatever it was, like the insurance that they have, they have like a $29 million insurance policy. And from what experts are saying, that's not going to be nearly enough to cover the amount of lawsuits and damages they're going to have to pay out. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're going to go bankrupt and then there's going to be some other people that are probably going to be in a lot of financial problems after this is all said and done. Yeah. So what I will say is, is that I did see a video circulating of Travis Scott stopping the music, cutting it. He did? He did. He stopped the music, he cut it, and there was somebody off to his left, it seemed like. He was like doing something, he was singing, then all of a sudden he picks his head up and he looks out and he sees somebody, literally the person was being held up by the crowd that he had passed out. I I did see that video. Travis Scott stopped the concert and was like, hey, get help right here. Um, So I, I, I do, I don't think in the moment, Travis Scott is crazy liable because what I will say is for these performers, like they are locked into their show. They're like almost in character during the whole thing. They know they have to perform. They got to get themselves in a state of mind to just be out there and just be engulfed in their performance. But what I will say is like, you know, the chanting, I don't know if he could hear that because he's got his earphones in. Yeah. He's got these, he's got these exact things in. That's true. I don't know how much he can hear of, of it at all. But what I will say is, the way that he has created this persona around him with his fans, he has encouraged his fans in the past, which is what I read to charge the stage. He has encouraged his fans to go crazy and start going nuts. I saw another video of him jumping into the crowd and somebody tried to steal his shoe and he literally was inciting to beat the guy. He was like, yeah. beat his ass, beat his ass. F him, 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 him up. Another one, a kid was trying to record on stage and he like cursed the kid off. Like he, he wants this chaos with his fans. And look at the set design. Right? So there's another thing in in this article. It's right here. And this is where he could find himself in trouble. And it was after the after the concert sold out immediately. Because Travis Scott, for those of you guys that don't know, he is huge. One of the biggest right now. Yeah. He's monstrous. Yeah. He tweeted out, we still sneaking in the wild ones. That's what happened. That's where this crazy crowd surge came from is that I don't know if you saw the videos and I don't know how much truth it is behind all this stuff. The one where it's a little bit earlier in the day. But it's just everybody knocking over the fence is just surging in like the security can't Dude. do anything there unless they're like, I like say I have tear gas or whatever, but like they're not carrying all this stuff. But when you have someone like Travis Scott, obviously the security team and the people hosting the concert didn't do their research on what Travis Scott's concerts are and what, what, he, what he brings and what he brings to the table. And that is chaos he likes it he feeds off of it now what i don't think anybody was prepared for was that surge and how it kind of smushed people in the middle and so i started reading up on this because i started reading up on different times that stuff like this had happened and this has happened before um what happens to people is before they're trampled they don't die from that allegedly what happens is they get suffocated because they're getting squished from front to back. The compression, the asphyxia. And the compression, and it squishes them, and they can't breathe, and then they die, and then they go to the ground, and that's where they get trampled on. In the grand scheme of things, it's all extremely graphic and it, it horrible. Yeah, horrible. And, and our thoughts and prayers absolutely go out to everybody that has been affected by this situation because this is terrible. But 
the thing that makes me frustrated with these concert, and I, I, I don't feel like Travis Scott. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't find him as the immediate Co- person culpable. Okay, li- that should be liable. I, I, I feel the security at the concert first. It's it's like their, Live Nation. It's You're saying Live job. Nation. It was their job to make sure our facility has enough people to take care of this situation, and we are not going to deal with a surge. You know, we we have outlets. There's ways to get to everybody. You know, because there was videos of you know a car trying to get through, or like this little like a golf like a rescue. cart siren. Well, yeah, they couldn't like get through. T- people on top of it jumping on it. Like Travis Scott can't see that. I don't know, but I don't find him. I, I do agree with you to an extent where he should have a pulse on it because now obviously did you see all the videos circulating of other artists stopping the shows and shutting it down being like you guys slide get this person up and then being like is there anybody else out there i think it was i can't remember who it was it was it was an artist saying is there anybody else out there that's passed out everybody look around you right now and like everybody and then they found another person and then he shifted and he was like we need to get help to that person right now and they got two people out so that's where I feel like when you see all these other videos of different artists that in this situation have happened, that's where I could be like, okay, maybe Travis Scott did something wrong, but I do think it was uh, it was heavy on on the on whoever threw the concert. Like so, like Live Nation, the arena itself. You know, I also wonder from like a fire marshal perspective, where you know, usually with these events, there's a certain amount of people that can be there. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have to look at reducing that number across the board, not just mm-hmm. for Travis Scott. Cause I always look at these tragedies and say, what can we learn from mm-hmm. it? And I know with these concerts, you want to pack them in there to the point where not just Travis Scott, you see all these concerts where literally it looks like an infestation. Like there's not a spot of grass you can see between them where these outside events, it just looks like a wave of just people. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to reduce that a little bit. Yeah. It's going to cut down on ticket sales. Sorry, mm-hmm. but it's going to keep people safe mm-hmm. because even if Travis had stopped, it's going to be so difficult to get to these individuals and the amount of time needed to before it's too late. And maybe we need to reduce the, the the allotment of people that are allowed to attend these concerts so that there can be a little bit more spacing, a little bit more room mm-hmm. so that you can set up maybe um, tents or stations where within the crowd, if there's an emergency in the middle of this massive group of people, instead of them having to get the person out, this is like a, a medical tent or something right in the middle that's there for people to kind of go to and get them the immediate help mm-hmm. that they need. Um, it's going to be interesting. I think it's a very polarizing topic. I do think there will be some changes. We had a we had a situation. It was called the Station Nightclub Fire here in Rhode Island a few years ago in Warwick. Um, there was a, a concert indoors. Um, there was a fire. The exit doors were not. It was one of the biggest casualties. Oh, in, well, like, I remember this. Yeah, it was huge. And people couldn't get out of the building. Yes. And a ton of people died. And so much has changed as far as capacity, Mm -hmm. the types of things that are used as far as materials for these pyrotechnics indoors. So many changes happen. It's like historical, the number as far as like, it's like the top mass casualty in like the country that didn't involve like a gun or Mm -hmm. some crazy statistic. I, I apologize. I don't know what it is. But hopefully some positive change comes out of this because definitely not going to help the families directly, uh, you know, affected by it. But hopefully we can prevent this from happening again. But we definitely want to hear from you guys because Cody and I are kind of on a different wavelength. I'm a little bit more leaning towards, hey, listen, when you're the president CEO, you have delegated people to communicate with Live Nation and communicate private uh, property and also security. So at the end of the day, shit rolls downhill. And also when things go bad, you go to the bottom of the hill and shit rolls on top of you. Mm -hmm. So weigh in the comments. Let us know what you think. And be descriptive. Don't just say, oh, Travis, give us your reasonings behind it. We always read the comments. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what you have to say because this is an issue that's going to affect all of us. Who doesn't like going to a good concert? Mm -hmm. I'm not a big public person, but I think about how young these kids were. And I think about my daughters and them coming to me now in the future and saying, you know, dad, I want to go to this concert. This is I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. And if things haven't changed significantly, I'm going to tell them no. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that there's new protocols and standards that come forward that I feel more comfortable as a parent. I'll probably be going with them, yeah. even if they don't want me to. Sneak but, in. You drop them off. Be like, yeah. all right, I'll pick you guys up, but you sneak Uncle back Cody in. will be with me. Uncle Cody you will be with me. We're sitting with binoculars. We're like, where's 10 Lee and Payton? Oh, nope, we got them. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Got them. 10-4. We'll have the mics in. You see them? Oh, oh, someone got too yep. close. 
I have a taser. Guy gets too close. Zzz, he drops. He's down. <laughs> he, <laughs> but, you know, this is going to affect everyone as it should. There needs to be change. It can't just be this tragic event. So hopefully everyone learns from this. But definitely let us know your thoughts and opinions on it because I think this is a very polarizing topic. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think the, the response is going to be across the board. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to our second topic. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Okay. I'm going to read the headline right here for you. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers says he takes responsibility for misleading comments about his vaccine status. Okay. So I was watching the Pat McAfee show where it was the first interview that, uh, and I should say uh, Pat McAfee, McAfee, not Mac McAfee. McAfee. Um, shout out, Pat. Great show if you're into sports. Um, where Aaron goes on there almost every Tuesday and does, he, he's always done this, mm -hmm. but he took the opportunity to give his first statement in regards to this incident. And if you want to go watch it, you can go check it out. Pat McAfee has his huge podcast and it's a visual, visual form on YouTube. You can check it out. But to kind of summarize, he basically said that initially when they asked him, they asked him at a press conference, you, you know, back months in ago, August. back in August, Aaron, are you vaccinated? And he said, Yes, I'm immunized. And then he went on to like say, you know, although I'm immun immunized, some people are not vaccinated. And I do think it should be people, you know, the person's choice to do what they want to do. So it was a little misleading because in one way, at one point he's saying I'm immunized, which I think most people, including myself, took that as, oh, I'm vaccinated. You know, I'm immunized. And then he went on to defend people who were not vaccinated. So it was kind of like, well, you're saying you are, but you, you, you're defending others. But OK, mm -hmm. you're vaccinated. That's what people want to hear. Well, come to find out he was recently diagnosed with COVID. And essentially, it has now been leaked because it wasn't him that came out and said it, that a lot of people within the Packers organization knew that he was seeking uh, holistic alternatives mm -hmm. and also different types of medication that aren't. We'll get into the, the ivermectin, all yeah. that stuff like that he's taking now. But things that he was taking to prevent him from getting uh, COVID, he had did the right thing and petitioned to the NFL that these alternatives were just as safe and based on the science mm -hmm. and some of the um, things that have been brought up about the vaccine itself. He was just as protected as someone who got the vaccine. Ultimately, it was the claim was denied and he was it was ruled that he was going to be treated as an unvaccinated NFL player. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole bunch of protocols that came in when you were unvaccinated. And his argument was that they basically make you feel like a third class citizen. Like you have to wear a band that identifies you. Mm -hmm. You have to sit in your car for 30 minutes uh, before you come in and wait for your test results. Mm -hmm. You can't work out with people. You have to wear a mask at, at all times. You can't sit and eat lunch with people. And he just really was coming out saying, listen, I think it's horrible what people are doing. I don't think the science is set in stone yet as far as if the vaccine is a good or bad thing for you. I consulted with doctors. I have an allergy to to, to the ingredient in two of the three vaccines. Yeah. Uh, the mRNA you, ones. The, yep. And he was only going to be even suitable for the Johnson & Johnson. And he said, listen, the Johnson & Johnson has had a ton of hits against it, like mm -hmm. blood clotting and all these things. Like, I'm not sticking that in my body. Mm -hmm. So really, I had no option. Um, and so I chose what was best for me after consulting with a team of doctors and, and, and doing the research. But I really think the, the whole, there are people who are anti-vaxxers, people who are people who are all for the vaccine. And then there are people who are for vaccines, just not this one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I think the real crux of this whole, why it's so polarizing is because in my opinion, Aaron Rodgers lied to us all yeah. and he didn't need to, he didn't need to. He could have just said, I'm not answering that question. And at the end of the day, it's your choice. Or but, or he could have just said no. Or he could have just said no. But he chose to kind of be sneaky. And he ha he did say in the McAfee interview, like, well, technically I was. I mean, dude, that's not going to work. But Well, because he said there was like a different type of medical procedure that he went through. Right. That has not been tested. Is not a It's not a studied um, way that has been proven to work. It's not peer reviewed. So it was essentially like, he was like, well, I, you know, I talked to my, my guru, my medical guru, which all these athletes have their medical they got the, gurus. Yeah, they're, they're, they I mean, they're all the have them healthiest people in the world. Yeah. Hence why they're able to compete now. When you have people that are competing at the highest level 
at the ages that they're competing shout at. Out, which shout is out Tom Brady. Too. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. You see it in mm-hmm. the soccer realm. You have Cristiano Ronaldo, like Lionel Messi. Like these guys are doing like highly active sports right. and competing at a high, the highest level at these right. ages. So they all have their gurus. Yeah. What is it? Uh, I think they were saying, you know, uh, Russell Wilson, LeBron, they spend like a million LeBron dollars a year James, on their, bo- on yeah, their body. Russell Wilson, yes. And so these guys are doing all this stuff. The thing that, the, the reason why I think it's in the news so much is exactly what you said. Is because you had a conference where he said, I'm immunized. Um, people took that as... He's vaccinated. Um, he's vaccinated. And then he is testing positive, which I will say this. There are a ton of NFL players that test positive who are vaccinated. Yeah. That, this isn't like, oh, well, he tested positive. He's unvaccinated, blah, blah, blah. Like, when you get the vaccine, you still can get COVID-19. Absolutely. In fact, he he believes you, he doesn't have any proof of this, but he believes the only people he's been around for the most part are vaccinated people. So he believes, which I got this from, is which is case, possible, which, yeah. Most of the people in the NFL are vaccinated. I mean, Nick Chubb on the Browns is now in COVID protocol along with somebody else because they are vaccinated. But the thing is, is now they, because they're vaccinated, all they have to do is as two negative tests in 24 hour period and they're good. And so it's like, okay, well, you know, do you get the, you get COVID, you have the vaccine, you're good to play. So Aaron Rodgers was, I guess he was exercising his, his right to not get it, but he didn't. It's it's situations like this that make somebody that that just puts a negative light and it creates the conversation for a lot of people. I saw everybody talking about it. I heard a lot of people talking about it. And this whole thing is is just a nightmare. And having a conversation on one side or the other is an absolute nightmare. Um, I don't feel like people should be like vaccinate or you you can't come to work. I like that the NFL has procedures in where okay, you're we're not forcing you to get the vaccine. But if you don't get the vaccine, you have to do these protocols. Yep. Aaron Rodgers was just fine, fourteen thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars because they have these protocols. That in. probably re- that probably really hurt his pocket. Yeah, crushed him. He's like financially in shambles now. How will he survive? But he's Packers fi- got fines too, right? Three hundred thousand dollars in there fines. And so, but the reason why Aaron Rodgers got his fine was because he went to a Halloween party that was only supposed to be for the vaccinated. Okay. He went to an unattended for the unvaccinated. Like this is okay. this is what I'm saying. Like this is just, it's. It's almost like a circus act here. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, like I understand like the vaccine is saving lives, but like when you're turning it into this like whole thing and it's like, and now you have all these headlines about Aaron Rodgers and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what, 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 what's, and I will say this, there's a new, there's a new thing coming out from Pfizer and I'm hoping that it's out soon. It's a pill. Did you hear about this pill? Yep. Man, I hope that gets approval and I hope that gets, that gets through because that's another thing that it's like, now what? You know, I for me, I got to be honest with you. I'm on the side of like, now what? Are you going to force people to get the vaccine when there's a pill out there that is, if you take it, or allegedly, according to Pfizer, the way that this pill is going to work is if you take it within the first three days of your diagnosis, you have like a 90% chance of survival, if not higher than that. And so that's that's my biggest thing about these these vaccine mandates and forcing them on and making these headlines for Aaron Rodgers and like what are you trying to do you see it with Kyrie Irving all everybody that it like speaks about them in the highest regard Kyrie Irving who is not only great in his sport he's great in his community and out in the community and doing a lot of things Aaron Rodgers you know is one of the best football players one of the best MVP last year MVP last year and now he's being dragged yeah. and that's where for me it's like do you do you think do you think I know what I know what some people are trying to make it right like the political side of it it's like he's an anti-vaxxer he's crazy that's the thing he's I cons- don't like he's consulted with Joe Rogan which makes him even more crazy mm-hmm. but for me the core of it it's like I think he got a lot more heat than he would have gotten if he didn't lie initially exactly. because 100%. that was I watched the interview I watched what he said no doubt about it it yeah. was it was a lie you didn't. Hundred percent was a lie. When I watched that video, I was like, it, it was almost like, um, it was like, uh, wh- like why, why did you need to do like, did you, did you think you were slick? Like, what are you, what are you trying to do here? And obviously, back then there was so much going on with Aaron Rodgers. If you remember back in August, Aaron Rodgers was like, I don't know, is he going to play this year? Uh, does he even want to be yep. on the Packers? Are they going to try to get? Well, that's rid what of people him? are it's saying. Like, there was so that's much what people going are on with Aaron Rodgers in the beginning of the season. That's what people are saying about Aaron, and that's what a lot of the sports announcers are saying because there always seems to be something with him. Mm-hmm. And and you know there were some interviews that some announcers were saying is on ESPN where it's like, listen, first and foremost, as you already pointed out, 
you could play in the NFL without being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. A lot of NFL players are doing it. Mm -hmm. But the NFL PA, which Aaron's a part of. Players Association. Agreed to a set set of protocols Mm -hmm. that unvaccinated players would have to abide by. He is part of that association. Mm -hmm. He is part of that union. And he was trying to circumvent those protocols. And I think he honestly felt like he could because he's Aaron Rodgers. And I think that's where it come, the undertone of it is because with him, he even made a comment in the McAfee interview where he was like, oh, the COVID guy came in and was talking to us. And I stood and I, you know, people were so happy that I stood up and was like calling him out and questioning him on some of the things he was saying, because ultimately he knows they're not going to cut him. Mm-hmm. He's Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. So I do think there's a sense of entitlement there mm-hmm. where he felt like I can do what I want. And even though these protocols are good for everybody else, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to pull a loophole so I don't have to abide by him. And his excuse for why he said he was immunized was because one, he was on a cocktail that, you know, or a, a regimen that technically was made him immunized, mm-hmm. but also he felt like his petition at that time that was currently in you know, the process was going to get approved Mm -hmm. by the NFL. And when it didn't, now what he said becomes a lie. But he knew, the guy asked him straight out, are you vaccinated? Correct. Yes, I'm immunized. So he could make the argument, well, I technically didn't lie. Didn't say I was vaccinated. But he's a smart enough guy, and he's been around the league long enough to know that that is, in most cases, a lie. So I think that's where where a lot of people like you and I, because you can have a different opinion about the vaccine. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, this is like pretty black and white. Mm -hmm. You lied to hundreds of thousands of people. So clearly you knew you were doing something wrong or something that maybe wouldn't wouldn't be well received Mm -hmm. because that's the only reason you would have to lie about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I agree with you. I think that I don't I don't want my, you know, opinion on, you know, the mandate and and the right. That's a different conversation, different conversation. But what I would say is that this could have been avoided. And honestly, he could have been he could have stayed out of the headlines. But what I do think is that no matter what, no matter what Aaron Rodgers test positive. And if he said back then, oh, I'm unvaccinated and he tests positive and he has to miss a game against Kansas City and they have, you Let's know, say one won, by record, the way. they would have 100 percent won. He has to miss a game against Kansas City, could miss this game. I still think this is Aaron Rodgers. His name is going to be in the headlines. These You're conversations right. were going to be had on ESPN on all they these. They would have said, oh, he's unvaccinated. He would have been unvaccinated. And, and that's what that's where I will say. They still would have tried to go after him the same way. I mean, in the NBA, you're not allowed to play without your vaccine in New York. So, you know, Kyrie Irving Kyrie's doesn't not get to play. Yet. And look at what they made of him. Oh, uh, I mean, like, there's he didn't definitely... come out and try to change anything. He didn't try to tiptoe around or like, you know, lie to anybody. Kyrie Irving said straight up what he what he felt. And he still got a ton of heat. And it's he a great a point. Heat. The, it's a great point. When it comes to this and the vaccine and just COVID in general, there's always that heat that's going to come your way. If you are not pretty much if you don't just like get vaccinated and shut up. You're going to be on the side of getting a ton of heat, period. That's what's going to yeah. happen right now. Yeah, and it, there's always the political element to it and using them. I got one final question for you because I know we got to move on. We're mm-hmm. going along with these topics, but they're, they're fascinating topics. Yeah. I've seen some some articles being written. Do you think, because you're, you're a big sports fan like myself, do you think this whole situation, because there are people on both sides of the aisle that aren't happy with him, because he lied, mm-hmm. not because he has choice to take the vaccine or not. Mm-hmm. Do you think this overall affects not saying whether it should, but do you think overall it affects Aaron Rodgers' legacy when 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 his career is done? No. You're nodding your head no. For the people that aren't watching, no. you're tell nodding me, your head no. Tell me in what way this affects his legacy. See, I, I don't think so either. It's almost like Brady. Guys, I, with you, it's honestly, like the flaky. Maybe, and maybe it does. Maybe there could be a point put in the comments. So, guys, please weigh off in the comments because I, as an athlete, I view Aaron Rodgers as just top top of not only his position, top in the league. He's absolutely incredible. Yeah, one of the better quarterbacks of all time, He's, for sure. He was an idiot for saying, I'm immunized, and, and kind of letting them feel like, okay, yes, you're vaccinated, so you're good. And then, you know, kind of going about it, it's like, well, I told everybody yeah. I was immunized, and so now I'm going to, you know, I know the protocols are there, but eh, whatever, I'm not going to do them. 
Yeah. He makes that way on because now that weighs on the Green Green Bay Packers organization. They're fined three hundred thousand dollars, which again in the grand scheme of things to the owner of the Peanuts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's and one so, Lambo. It's one Lambo. I mean, it's not even that to them, I don't feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't but I don't think this affects his legacy. And I think people that say it does affect his legacy just really at the end of the day don't have an understanding of of athletics and really are just trying to politicize whatever's going on here. That's how a I lot feel of, about it. I, I, I agree with you. I think in the grand scheme, like at, from a macro level, when you look at his body of work, we're going to evaluate him on this game. There will definitely be people that always, like I said, like, Tom is he Brady's not going to get in the Hall of Fame because of this? No. <laughs> no he's got he's got to. And, and same thing, Tom Brady. Tom Brady has a few controversies, the cheating, you know, the deflate gate. At the end of the day, Tom Brady's Tom Brady. Right. And that's what most people can remember. The people who don't like him, the people who, he murdered their teams numerous times. They're going to do that's part of that. And so I agree, but damn Aaron, I know you're probably not watching our little podcast, but, but if you were, I gotta be honest, I still love you. Uh, but yeah, you definitely, I, but you just definitely don't, don't didn't say, need to be, well, you know, don't what? say anything. You didn't need to be in this situation, but I, but I do wholeheartedly feel he would have been in this situation no matter what. It is Aaron Rodgers. That's a, it's a great argument. Sound off below guys. We want to hear your comments. We have, I have a feeling a lot of people going to weigh in on this. Oh, People are going to weigh in on this. And I'll tell you what. Yes, sir. People are going to come at me a little bit, I feel. But what are you going to do? Hey, listen. We want we want to have honest conversation. This is the whole point of the show. Yeah. The whole point of the show is not to tell you what you want to hear or like try to get clicks or likes. I can tell you a few we- other things you might not want to hear. <laughs> But I'll keep that for another episode. We'll keep that. Hey, we got to keep that content coming. Only so much each episode. Last topic. And a good one, by the way. No. I got. Wait till I got this for you. Pull it up. Pull it up. My boy. All right. Last topic of the evening. Paul Rudd is people's 2021 sexiest man alive. What has the people's sexiest man alive come to that Paul Rudd Let's has go. won it? Let me, Let's let, me, let me start the segment off for you really quickly, Derek. <laughs> Please. People's sexiest man alive list from last year Oh, God, year this down. is bad. This is bad. Tell me Paul Rudd's name belongs in the vicinity with this these guys. This is bad. I, I didn't know you were going to go there. This is where I'm going. I didn't know you were going to go. <laughs> last year's Michael B. Jordan. Sexy dude. My, not just. He's a 12. And he's a stud. Listen, he's the man. I don't care. Black Black Panther. But I mean, Michael just, B. Jordan just crushed it. He is one of the sexiest men alive. <clears throat> He's a handsome dude. Anyways, moving on. This one, I almost didn't even want to say because it doesn't really help the uh, argument. But, you know, he is, I guess, in his own realm because his voice is just so beautiful that you could be, you know, you could be, he could be singing to you. John Legend. Yeah, I don't think he, not don't think that, he's that attractive. Not that attractive, but his voice is, right, voice is good. out of control. Yeah. Idris Elba. Stud. 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 Yep. Stud. The, and the accent. Uh, stud. Yeah. Yep. Blake Shelton. Dwayne Johnson. Nah. Wait, wait, wait. Blake, don't skip over Blake Jel- Shelton. What do you, Blake what do we Shelton think about Blake? Is, is supposed to be like the bad boy. Yeah, it's not, yeah. He's not, that's not what he is. He's not that He's good a good looking. looking guy. He's better looking than he, Paul Rudd. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, now is where the list gets uncontroversial and absolutely <laughs> like there's no question at all. Then we got Dwayne Johnson, David Boom. Beckham, Chris yep. Hemsworth, Adam Levine, Channing Tatum, Bradley Cooper, Ryan Reynolds. That's in order. So it goes Michael B. Jordan, John Legend, Idris Elba, Blake Sheldon, Dwayne Johnson, David Beckham, Chris Hemsworth, Adam Levine, Channing Tatum, Bradley Cooper, Ryan Reynolds. And the list could go on and on. Clooney's on it too. Paul Rudd now gets to be on the same list as Clooney when it comes to looks. Come on. I, I, I've heard that the way they decide it was because it's basically who – is getting the most engagement when they're on in the articles throughout the year. And they go based on that. Like who's relevant, who's getting it. Then but they should make let it me the start, most relevant man alive. Let, let, let me start by saying, I love this <laughs> because, and you, and you always correct me on this, but I, I think I'm, I think, I think I hold my own, but I'm by no means a supermodel. And I like seeing the normal guy be, be labeled, Sexiest man alive. I think it gives like, hope for us. Look at this video right here, standing next to Chris Hemsworth. Oh no, that's <laughs> brutal. Why are they doing that to him? Why they do that to because him? Chris Hemsworth was on that list, and this you, is so. If you, you guys can't want, put anybody next to Chris Hemsworth, but this is an interview. This is an interview that he's doing, and so if you guys want to check out the interview, it's People People Magazine. Um, but 
Paul looked like his assistant in that one. Yeah, exactly. Look at Paul right here. He's, I mean, he's not even like an old like Michael. B, look at him next to Michael B. Jordan. Here he is, twenty twenty. That's brutal, man. Why like, are you doing that? That to him? is a good looking dude. He is sexy. I mean, he is ripped up, Michael B. Jordan. And the next one is Paul Rudd. Paul, you're my man, <laughs> get it done, Ant Man, baby. Come on, man. And listen, I love Paul Rudd. Dude, I think can, he is can, incredible. Well, let me pose that question to you. Is there something to be said for how funny and talented he is where that in and of itself makes him sexy? No. <laughs> no. I mean, no? what? Because, because you could make the argument like Michael B. Jordan's super talented too, though. Like, I mean, he, so that they kind of wa- that washes its out. I mean, come on, man. Give Paul a break. I like give him a break because I love him. He's hilarious. I watch a, a lot of which, a lot of what he's in, uh, and so I really coming like out Paul with a Rudd. Ghostbusters. Coming out with a Ghostbusters. I'm not a huge sir. Ghostbusters fan, so like that, I don't. You know, you're a little younger than me, but Ghostbusters was it. When I mean, I was Ghostbusters a kid. was big when I was younger too. But I was, um, I was very like um, skittish when I was younger. I didn't like scary movies and like you were scared. Ghostbusters yeah, you were scared. was Just enough. Say scared. Ghostbusters was enough to make me be like jumping into my bed from like 15 feet away and like, you know, well, Paul Rudd's going to be your hero upstairs. now. Paul Rudd's going to be your hero now. He's going to be, oh, Chris Evans, I think, was on the list at yeah. one point. I think there's, Come on. That's, yeah, everybody's, man. everybody's mocking this. And, dude, literally half of the Avengers has been on. <laughs> and then Paul Rudd. And then, but he's, a, he's an Avenger. Yeah, he's the Ant Man. He's not like fully in the Avengers, but he was part of, the, you know, he saved the universe too. And, Listen, Nathan. He's he's got his own powers. I I get what you're saying. What we as a society view as sexy, he doesn't fit that mold. But I do think people they're trying to change the narrative. Whether you agree with it or not, I don't so, agree with it. Which I'll tell yeah, you, you that, definitely know. What is what? <laughs> what did Christy think? I don't even. I didn't even ask her. Well, geez, I mean, you know, I mean, ask her. I want to give him a- because here's the thing. Like Christy likes Sam Hunt. She likes. Uh, like good looking guys, you know, like yeah. Paul Rudd, she she doesn't like the guys for their personality. Yeah. Oh uh, shit. <laughs> Dude, he just buried himself. Cody's on the ground right now in his <laughs> office. Uh, uh, you literally were like uh, had a moment where you were like, damn. What did I just say there? That's in stone. Oh man. We're gonna get murdered in the comments right now. No, listen, sound off below. Let us know what you think. Paul Rudd, 2021, sexiest man of the year. Is it deserving? Tell us why. Or why not? Just or why not? And to twist it up, who would be your sexiest man of yes. the year? Yes. Someone who's not on the list currently. So someone that was not on the last 15 years. Yeah. Last 15 years. So go back and look up the list. It was very easy. Very easy to access who the list is. Um, so last 15 years. Who would be your sexiest man of 2021, right? And it can't be now. Brad Pitt because we all know he would be on it. I mean, he's already year. been on it. Yeah, he'd be on it every. I mean, you know, it would be cool. Brad Pitt ain't on it now. Brad Pitt's old. Dude, he's still a good looking cat. He's an old Imagine if cat. Imagine if they let it be like it wasn't just like, hey, we're going to just pick someone. Like everyone's going to get a chance to be the sexiest man of the year. And they like had people who could be it multiple years, like to be like, the defending champion. I guess that would be an ego shot when you didn't win again, though. Or it's, you know, we're part of the whole like trophy generation where it's like everybody needs to get it. And so we can't give it to somebody back to back. And so give Tom me this. Brady's been slapping that for everybody. I want another title and nobody could else. Could you pull up? Could you pull before we could you pull up a picture of the uh, the people 2020, 2021, the magazine cover? Can you pull up that picture real quick for our YouTube subscribers here? There it is. Well, look at that blue steel. Beautiful. That seems like there's a lot of photo airbrushing going on in there in that photo. But he looks he, good. D- he looks good in that photo, bro. He looks good. Let me hold right? on. Let's, let's get rid of this right here. No thanks. Right? Ooh, crush for life. Hashtag crush for life. Paul Rudd, you dirty Dude, dog. you got to admit, after all that junk you just talked, tell me he don't look good in that picture. He looks good, man. He's got green eyes. I like. He's a good. Listen, Paul Rudd is not an unattractive guy. He's just like an awkwardly good-looking guy. It's like that quir- quirky, funny, oh, I guess he's good-looking. You know what I mean? His personality makes him even more good looking. I like, guess. But then I mean, it's he your crushed personality. Anchorman. Him and Anchorman is great. just like next level. I love I mean, him in Friends. He was great in Friends. I saw, I just was watching Friends. I oh, just Friends. Friends where he got to start. Yep. He's yep. great. No, I mean. He's great. He, that photo, shout out to the photographer because that one, whatever they did, 
he, that's his best. That's his best right there. He looks like he looks sexy in that picture. Mm. Mm. All right. Anyways. Well, shout out to Paul. <laughs> Jealous of you, buddy. Keep fighting for the little guys. Keep fighting for us, man. You know what? That's almost like insulting to him. He's probably like, hey, if if Paul Rudd ever sees this, which he just might. You never know. He might be a Big Brother fan. We don't Dude, know. you know he's self-deprecating where he's like, listen, I know I shouldn't be on this list. You know he's <laughs> saying that. Well, a- a part of it is, is up here. You see it right in the beginning. He goes, <laughs> I'm getting business cards made. I'm going to lean into it hard. Yeah, yeah dude. I'm going to own this. I, this is That's just part of the reason why you love Of course. It. You don't think he's doing all his interviews going, come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> Let's be honest. When That's Paul Rudd. It, yeah. That's why he's great. You mm-hmm. know, like he he knows he's not like he doesn't seem like a, a, a egotistical, like so, cocky dude where he's like, nah, yep. he's a good guy. He's still going to be doing these funny ass movies where he's just making fun of. I mean, everything he does is hilarious. Yeah, he makes fun of himself in, in all these movies with all like the other with the other actors. So mm-hmm. no, um, big fan of Paul Rudd. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Paul. Keep going, buddy. Don't let the Cody's of the world turn you down. I'm voting for you for two, 2022, too. I love Paul Rudd. I did. He's great, but you I give just him a think shot. There could have been somebody else that was sexier than Paul Rudd. Who would be? Your, who would be on your? Li- I'm putting you on the spot. Who is it for you? Mm, um, you know it depends. Uh, you know, are we going older? He's Zach a Efron. Older. Your boy Zach's never no, been I on think, there. I, he I has, has, if he's never been on it, then he should have damn well been on it. Um, I was thinking also somebody that's like pretty. It's in because they just had another episode of um, the show on Netflix. The guy John B. Yeah, you know the show I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, he's. Good I don't looking. know what is that. The, I don't know what his. I don't know what his name is. The actor, but I think he could the one with the, like the light colored like. eyes there. Yeah, light long hair. Yeah, yeah, no, Paul Rudd. All right, all right. All right. Well, all right, guys. That wraps us up. Any, anything else? Nothing, right? Nope. All right, guys. Listen, we appreciate it. This is a lot of fun for us. We hope you're enjoying it. As Cody always says, I'll, I got you this week. Hell yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're listening on audio, please, please, please sound off in the comments. Give us a five star rating. It really helps. And finally, if you're watching our episodes, because there's a lot of people who are watching our episodes every week on YouTube, but they're not currently subscribed. If you are subscribed, turn on the notifications. We appreciate you joining us here on the Winner Circle, guys. We will see you next week.